One of the most requested clans I have ever seen since starting this series covering the history of many of Japan's prominent samurai families has been the Uesugi. The extremely significant clan who is of course made infinitely famous by their legendary Sengoku period daimyo, Uesugi Kenshin, the dragon of Echigo. It is finally at long last that my supporters on Patreon have voted for me to cover the story of the Uesugi here today as we will be examining them from their birth to their decline, exploring their fascinating story throughout the ages, and truly coming to understand why the Uesugi have become such a popular family. Of course, the Uesugi are not the last prominent samurai family I have to cover. There are so many more to come, and if you want a say in which clan I will be covering next, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon, where any tier will grant you access to exclusive polls such as my clan history videos and weekly samurai spotlights on social media. But before we go any further on to discussing the topic of this video on the Uesugi clan, we first need to take some time to honor one of Uesugi Kenshin's greatest loves, Sake. That's correct, this video is once again sponsored by Tipsy Sake. With Japan still mostly closed off from the rest of the world in our current post-COVID age, it's not a good sign for many of the country's sake breweries as they try to stay afloat. This is why I love Tipsy Sake, because they bring sake out of Japan and straight to your doorstep, helping the many sake breweries across Japan survive throughout economic woes. Tipsy Sake is on a mission to help broaden your horizons by aiding you in exploring what has largely been thought of as a mystery drink from Japan, and they go fabulous lengths to really ensure you understand the significance of the drink. In my previous sponsorship for Tipsy Sake, I received a box that came with a carefully curated assortment of six from a selection of over 400 different bottles, with also a booklet and reference cards to help fully explore not only the crafting of sake itself, but also to help familiarize oneself with the actual brands of the bottles received. This time around, however, I received a fabulous bottle from Hakaisan Brewery, which amazingly enough is located in Niigata Prefecture, basically what used to be known as Echigo Province, the home of the Uesugi family under Uesugi Kenshin. The timing for this video and bottle could not have been more perfect. But on top of that, I also received this awesome Amoiraku wooden sake cup to enjoy the sake with even more. I cannot highly recommend Tipsy Sake enough. Their subscription service is extraordinary, helping people new to sake experience it in all of its grandeur, and aiding seasoned connoisseurs explore fascinating new varieties. Down below, I will leave a link to where you can get your very own sake assortment from Tipsy Sake. And also, you can use the promo code SHOGUNATESEP for September to receive 15% off on all products. This really is a fantastic service, and I highly recommend it to anyone who already loves sake or is interested in trying it out. Just please remember to obey your country's laws about the purchasing of alcohol, and please drink responsibly. So, with that said, let's dive into the history of the Uesugi. The Uesugi clan have their roots as members of the Kajuji line of the northern branch of the famous aristocratic family, the Fujiwara. Yet they would not officially adopt the Uesugi title until the 13th century, well into the Kamakura period, when a figure known as Kajuji Shigefusa acquired territory in Tanba province that bore the Uesugi name. The Uesugi family Kamon, or crest, would come to be known as the Uesugi Sasa, it depicts two birds inside of a circle of bamboo leaves. However, it is not to be confused with another famous symbol, that of the battle flag of Uesugi Kenshin, who displayed the first kanji character in the name of Bishimonten, a Buddhist deity the Japanese consider to be a god of war, who is closely associated to the Shinto god of war, Hachiman. For much of the Kamakura period, they remained as a dignified aristocratic presence serving the imperial family. However, by 1252, they would relocate to Kamakura, when the imperial prince Munetaka assumed the position of becoming the new shogun of the Kamakura Bakufu. Yet it should be noted that this process was largely under the control of the Hojo Regency who continued to pull strings behind the scenes, dominating the shogunate itself and dictating who actually was allowed to become the shogun. Nevertheless, 
With the Uesugi now serving a quote-unquote imperial shogun, they too quickly became recognized as a warrior family themselves. It is here their rise truly begins, as a series of events would transpire over the coming centuries that would catapult them into becoming one of the greatest samurai families in Japan. Munetaka's time as the imperial shogun was not to last forever, and by 1266 he was sent back to Kyoto to be replaced as shogun by his son Koreyasu. Yet the Uesugi family under Shigefusa would remain in Kamakura and would continue to amass influence. He would in time come to serve the Ashikaga family and even marry his granddaughter to Ashikaga Sadauji, who would later receive the birth of the famous Ashikaga Takauji. Due to their close relations with the Ashikaga, it was only natural that in years to come, the Uesugi family would side with Takauji during Emperor Godaigo's eventual overthrow of the Kamakura Shogunate in 1333, and then the subsequent rise of Takauji's own military government in 1338. Things for the Uesugi get more than a bit complicated and chaotic throughout the turbulent birth of the Ashikaga shogunate and later eruption of the Nanbokucho period, where after Ashikaga rule over Japan was established, an era of bitter civil war began between competing northern and southern imperial courts. The Uesugi remained firm in their commitment to the Ashikaga and would support the shogunate and the legitimate northern court against that of the south during this time. And through their notable service and status, they came to establish a vast amount of power and authority in the East. By the end of the Nanbokucho period and into the early 1400s, the Uesugi through various branches of their own family now ruled all the way from Echiko through Kozuke, Musashi, and Sagami. They had also taken up the influential title of being the Kanto Kanrei a mighty deputy position who served the Kanto Kubo, the Ashikaga Shogunno ruler of the Kanto region. Through this title, the Uesugi held an official and commanding grip over the East, and can largely be seen as one of the greatest powers in Japan for a time. The Uesugi would even be strong enough to overthrow the Kanto Kubo in 1416, when the rebellious former Kanrei Uesugi Zenshu took up arms against the Kubo Ashikaga Mochiyuji. Zenshu would be joined by a number of other significant allies, forcing the Ashikaga shogunate in Kyoto to intervene. This would result in Zenshu eventually being forced to flee and commit seppuku, while Mochiyuji would retake his old position. Yet the violence would go on as Mochiyuji continued to wage endless war against Zenshu's old supporters, likely using their treachery as an excuse to expand his own power. This would finally force the shogunate to take action yet again, this time against Mochiyuji, who would be defeated in 1439. These conflicts in the east, which served to further destabilize not only the region but also Ashikaga authority, are by some seen to be early indicators of the massive Warring States period to come. By 1467, we see the outbreak of the Onin War, the decade-long struggle that began in Kyoto and would spiral out of control into the Sengoku Jidai, when the power of the Ashikaga had truly diminished, and in the absence of their grip over the nation, many regional lords would rise up to expand their own influence. And although the Uesugi family stretched far and wide across the east throughout the early years of this period, quickly we can see cracks in the foundation of their rule, as their divided branches from Echigo to Sagami failed to form a solid unified force to be reckoned with. Their power was destined to erode. It began with the rise of Issei Shinkuro, the famous early Sengoku Daimyo who arose out of the Imagawa to establish his own domain. Shinkuro was a skilled military leader and had the ambition to match, and throughout the 1490s and early 1500s he took advantage of the weakness of the Ogigayatsu branch of the Uesugi family who governed throughout the Kanto region, invading their land and claiming it under his own authority. By the time of his death in 1519, his power had expanded from Izu to Sagami. His son, Ujitsuna, would rebrand the family, taking up the old Hojo name, and forever becoming known as the Gohojo or later Hojo. Posthumously, Ise Shinkuro would be renamed to Hojo Son. The rise of the later Hojo was ill tidings for the divided Uesugi family, who still technically held the title of the Kanto Kanrei 
Yet in the coming decades, as ferocious assaults by the Hojo continued to eat up more and more territory within the Kanto Plain, the title became simply one in name, as the Uesugi slowly lost control over the region. By 1545, in a last-ditch attempt to push back against the Hojo and retake the Kanto region, an Uesugi coalition marched to seize Kawagoe Castle in Musashi Province. The siege would end in disaster, however, when Hojo Ujiyasu would arrive with a relief force that broke the siege and scattered the coalition. This defeat effectively eliminated the Ogegayatsu branch of the Uesugi family. Things must have now seemed increasingly grim for the Yamanochi branch of the family in Kotsuke and the Echigo branch. Indeed, the Uesugi may have fallen into complete and utter decline and destruction here were it not for the intervention of a very significant figure, a young leader by the name of Nagao Kagetora. The Nagao family were prominent vassals of the Uesugi, who lorded over much of Echigo province, and by the late 1540s, after proving himself by defeating a number of rival upstarts, the figure known as Nagao Kagetora succeeded his sickly brother Nagao Harukage as leader of the family. Around this time as well, after their victory at Kawagoe, the overwhelming might of the Hojo began pushing up into Kozuke, threatening the weak Yamanochi branch. Uesugi Norimasa, the head of the Yamanochi and holder of the Kanto Kanrei title, was left with little choice other than to flee north and seek refuge with the much stronger Nagao. It was here, Kagetora's grand entry into the Uesugi family was set to take place as of course, he would later go on to become the famed Uesugi Kenshin. However, upon further reading, there appears to be several discrepancies as to when and how he actually achieved lordship of the clan. For some time, I have been of the belief in the idea that Kagetora had orchestrated his entry into the Uesugi family when Norimasa came to seek refuge with him in 1551. And it was here that Kagetora pulled off a spectacular political maneuver in convincing Norimasa to adopt him, name him his heir, and even the successor of the Kanto Kanrei title, which all would have made for a fascinating turn of events in one fell swoop. And it is not too impossible to believe either, given the dire situation Norimasa was in. It is believable that he could have been convinced to such an arrangement. However, other sources indicate that several of these happenings may have occurred later such as during Kagetora's eventual war against the Hojo, or even perhaps while he was visiting Kyoto in 1559. Personally, I believe that at least one of these things likely happened during Norimasa's visit in 1551, and that it was probably that Kagetora managed to convince him to adopt him. When the transfer of the Kanto Kanrei title occurred is still very much up for debate. Whatever the case, from this point forth we will consider him the dominant figure within the Uesugi clan. In the coming years, he would end up changing his name several times, going from Kagetora to Masatora to Terutora to, of course, his famous Buddhist name, Kenshin. Uesugi Kenshin would by far become one of the most fascinating figures in not only the Sengoku period, but in terms of all of Japanese history. A devout Buddhist who appears to have remained largely celibate throughout his life, his humble nature may have even been the cause of his regular lack of appetite not often eating very much at all. But on the flip side of that, he also famously loved to drink a lot of sake, which may have aided in the cause of his later death. It appears he had a tremendous sense of respect and duty, which was evident through the visit he made to Kyoto where he paid homage to the Emperor and the Ashikaga Shogun, and of course later during what would be his push against the Hojo to reclaim territory and assert his status as the Kanto Kanrei. On a more personal level, Kenshin's own gender and sexuality has been called into question over the years, as a number of theories have arisen pointing to him perhaps either being in actuality a woman or perhaps even homosexual. On the idea of him being a woman, such examples of him having a more feminine appearance and perhaps even showing signs of a menstrual cycle does show an argument can be made. And in terms of his homosexuality, as I have discussed much previously, male-male same-sex relations were common among samurai, particularly that of samurai and their pages, so it is not entirely an impossible theory. Yet although there is some evidence that does open the door to these questions of him being either a woman or homosexual, there is also evidence to support the opposite, such as likely romanticized love stories that were written about him and other women, and also the fact that it is completely plausible to believe that his strong Buddhist faith led to his celibacy and the fact that he never married. To be honest, I am one to believe he actually was a man. 
because the idea that he was a woman would have taken too much effort to keep up such a secret, and would have needed to go far back into his history in the Nagao family to truly be plausible. Interestingly enough though, there are rumors that portraits made of him during the Sengoku period actually did depict him in a more feminine way, and that his more masculine appearance did not emerge until artist renditions of him came about in the Edo period. Sadly, however, it appears almost all actual portraits of him that were made during his lifetime were all kept in a collection at a temple on Mount Koya, which was completely destroyed by a fire in 1893. But getting back to the state of the Uesugi family, Kenshin's increased role in the clan upon being adopted in would quickly show results, as the Uesugi family can be seen to have been strengthened and reinvigorated under his dominant presence. Indeed, from this point on, we can stop viewing the Uesugi as scattered branches of the same family, but one unified force once again. And this was definitely needed, as not only were the Uesugi still facing threats from the Hojo, but also, soon enough, they would be met with that of the Takeda who had been pushing up through Shinano province. Kenshin would of course rush down to combat the rising danger of the Takeda, and would do battle against the legendary Takeda Shingen over the course of a decade and five battles that would occur upon the Kawanakajima Plain in northern Shinano. With the most significant clash being that of the fourth battle in 1561, in which both armies fully came to engage each other, resulting in a momentous bloodbath that has gone down in history as one of the greatest and most romanticized samurai battles of all time. Kenshin would in the end halt the Takeda's northward advance, and both he and Shingen would forever be remembered as the greatest rivals in all of Japanese history. If you want to learn more about the battles of Kawanakajima, I covered them all in depth in my main Sengoku Jidai series, links below. But Kenshin's wars against the Takeda were only a fraction of his military career. As I mentioned, he also undertook action to beat back the Hojo and push south to reclaim the Kanto region. By 1560, Kenshin had launched an offensive that had cut deep into Kanto, seizing territory in Musashi province such as Matsuyama Castle and even Kamakura. This would all culminate in his 1561 Siege of Orawara, in which the Hojo had been driven back within the safety of their walls. Yet lacking the proper supplies to stage a prolonged siege, Kenshin did not stay for long. It did not help either that continued threats from Takeda Shingen also forced Kenshin to ride back north in preparation for another one of their clashes at Kawanakajima. In the end, the Uesugi and the Hojo would reconcile by 1569, and would cement their new diplomatic status with daimyo Hojo Ujiyasu sending his seventh son, Hojo Saburo, to the Uesugi as a political hostage. And surprisingly enough, Kenshin would take a great liking to the boy, and would eventually take him fully as an adopted son, allowing him to take the name Uesugi Kagetora, the same name Kenshin once bore. Uesugi Kagetora, however, was not the only adopted son Kenshin would take, as by this point he already had another as well, Uesugi Kagekatsu. This new peace between the Hojo and Uesugi would not last long, however, as after the death of Hojo Ujiyasu in 1571, his son and heir Hojo Ujimasa would renew hostilities between the clans. Despite this, during the 1570s, the Uesugi were also seen to be expanding a great deal westward, as by 1576, Kenshin's forces were seen to have pushed through Echu and Noto, leaving only Kaga province as a buffer between him and the ever-growing might of the Oda. And within a year, as the Oda Northern Army under Shibata Katsuie and Maeda Toshie began to amass in response to the Uesugi presence, Kenshin would win one of his greatest triumphs. It was here Uesugi and Oda forces would meet in the 1577 Battle of Tedorigawa in Kaga Province, where Kenshin would completely outwit the Oda army and deliver a stunning defeat upon them. In the aftermath, the Oda were briefly sent into a state of panic, as with Oda forces in full retreat, Nobunaga feared that Kenshin may seize the advantage to push deeper into the central region, and even perhaps towards Kyoto. However, Kenshin would instead choose to use this victory to strengthen his authority over his newly acquired territories, and instead plan to continue his offensive the following year. Unfortunately, his new campaign would never begin, as he would come to die in the spring of 1578 leaving behind a legacy as one of the greatest military minds in all of Japanese history. Yet the state in which he left the Uesugi clan in was not as stable as he might have hoped, wishing that his adopted sons would continue to rule the Uesugi together as a unified force, 
Instead, a violent succession dispute would erupt following Kenshin's passing, as both Uesugi Kagekatsu and Kagetora vied for power. Remembered as the Otate no Ran, this brief civil war destroyed the clan's strength and sent the Uesugi into a state of weakness that they would never fully recover from. Eventually, Kagekatsu would win the struggle, as the Hojo-born Kagetora would commit seppuku in defeat. Over the next four years, after the passing of Takeda Shingen years earlier in 1573 and the later massive defeat of the Takeda at Nagashino, Oda forces were expanding ever further eastward, as Nobunaga appeared on the precipice of conquering the land. To this end, the Uesugi were threatened from the east, as Oda forces had returned to keep up the pressure by invading Ichu. Things must have seemed completely disastrous when the Takeda fully succumbed to Nobunaga's armies in 1582. Yet, a saving grace would occur when Nobunaga would be betrayed and killed at the Temple of Honoji that same year. In the aftermath of his death, Hashiba Hideyoshi began to appear as a proper successor to Nobunaga's central regime, and soon enough, in a bid to save their position, the Uesugi would ally themselves under Hideyoshi's growing might. They would even in time come to support the small Sanada family of Ueda, former Takeda vassals who had rebelled against their new Tokugawa overlords, and would face assaults from both the Tokugawa and the Hojo. Being relatively early supporters of Hideyoshi was a great step in the right direction for the Uesugi, as their status and the protection they would receive allowed them to recover bits of their former strength. They were not to be considered a great power anymore by any means, but their presence in the East was one that definitely kept the balance in check in this post-Oda era. Uesugi Kagekatsu was increasingly seen by Hideyoshi as a dependable figure who would support him in many of his campaigns working towards full unification, taking part in the wider Komaki-Nagakute conflict in 1584, and later sending troops to help with the Siege of Odawara in 1590, which brought down the Hojo, and can be seen as the final push towards Hideyoshi's ultimate victory. Two years later, Kagekatsu would even come to aid in Hideyoshi's invasion of Korea, the Imjin War and is said to have been responsible for the construction of one of the Wajo Japanese castles built on the Korean peninsula. Moving deeper into the 1590s, with Hideyoshi's health now deteriorating, he would form the Gotairo, a council of five elders or regents, a group of the five most powerful lords in all of Japan, who would act to not only keep each other in check, but also ensure the raising of Hideyoshi's young son Hideyori, who was to one day succeed him. These members included Tokugawa Ieyasu, Mori Teremoto, Maeda Toshiie, Ukita Hideie, and Kobayakawa Takakage. Yet Takakage would come to pass away in 1597, and thus Kagekatsu took his place as next in line in terms of strength and influence. Shortly thereafter, his position was also increased by the Toyotomi government, as Kagekatsu was relocated from Echigo to Aitsu, a wealthier domain that was largely made up of territory throughout southern Mutsu province, but also included some territory in Dewa. These lands had formerly been hotly contested over by both the ambitious Date and Mogami, who still maintained control of other areas throughout the Tohoku region. To this end, Kagekatsu's relocation here is also seen as a measure to keep the Date and Mogami in check. Following Hideyoshi's death in 1598, tension quickly started brewing between Tokugawa Ieyasu and loyalist figures within the Toyotomi regime such as Ishida Mitsunari. Perhaps due to the prominent position Hideyoshi had propped the Uesugi back up into by this point in time, Kagekatsu was opposed to Ieyasu's political maneuvering. Thus the Uesugi became an instrumental part of what would become the Western Army. In 1600, Kagekatsu began building up his fortifications across his domain, an action seen as mischievous by Tokugawa Ieyasu, who immediately demanded that Kagekatsu travel to Kyoto to explain himself. Instead, Kagekatsu refused. This was further sensationalized by the famous Nawe Letter, a letter written by the significant Uesugi vassal Nawe Kanetsugu, who wrote a scathing reply to the Tokugawa. This essentially kicked off the entire Sekigahara conflict, as Ieyasu, who was positioned at Osaka at this point, was forced to rush back east to protect his lands in Kanto against Uesugi aggression. Yet, Kagekatsu would never be able to fully mobilize his army against the Tokugawa, as Ieyasu's Date and Mogami allies both marched south to assault the Uesugi border, an action which tied the Uesugi down and allowed Tokugawa Ieyasu to instead focus his full effort on defeating Ishida Mitsunari. 
which of course he did at the Battle of Sekigahara in the fall of that year. In the aftermath, being that Kagekatsu was on the losing side, he would be stripped of much of his territory, yet he would not completely lose everything, and instead would just be demoted to being the lord of the smaller Yonezawa domain in Dewa province. The Uesugi would from then forth be considered as Tozama outsider daimyo, being viewed unfavorably and with suspicion by the Tokugawa who within three years would establish their new shogunate. Of course, years later, the Uesugi would participate in the sieges of Osaka, obviously this time siding with the shogunate. Kagekatsu would live on in Yonezawa for the remainder of his life, building a solid new base for his now diminished Uesugi government. He would later die in 1623 and would be succeeded by his illegitimate son, Uesugi Sarakatsu. Kagekatsu would be remembered as a very grim figure someone who rarely showed emotion, and may have even been plagued with an inferiority complex, always trying to live up to the great legend that was his adoptive father, Kenshin. The Uesugi family would continue to live on throughout the Edo period, and although they briefly faced the danger of dying out, and later a sharp decline in their wealth, they ultimately weathered the ages. During the waning years of the shogunate throughout the Bakumatsu period and Boshin War, it appears that the Uesugi under daimyo Uesugi Narinori had been in favor of supporting the pro-imperial movements. Yet, due to a falling out between him and prominent imperial loyalists, he would end up supporting the shogunate instead. Uesugi forces would end up winning a string of small victories throughout the Boshin War, yet eventually with the tide quickly turning would be forced to fully submit to imperial authority. Following the end of the war and the restoration of the emperor, they would be allowed to be part of the new Japanese aristocracy, the Kazoku, yet due to their previous support of the shogun would have their overall position once again diminished. Yet despite this, they remain as one of the prominent samurai families who still live on to this very day, with the current family head being Uesugi Kunenori, who is a distinguished professor at the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. All in all, the story of the Uesugi is definitely one of great significance, being a powerful and influential family rising through the Kamakura period to become one of the greatest powers in Japan during the Muramachi period. Yet of course their true fame comes from Uesugi Kenshin, the dragon of Echigo, who came to solidify the Uesugi name as one of the most legendary in Japanese history. And although they would face hardship and challenge after his death, Proper credit should still be given to his adopted son, Kagekatsu, for ensuring the family lived on and continued to live up to the ideals of Kenshin himself. If you would like a say in which clan I cover next, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon, where you are able to suggest ideas and vote in polls to determine future videos. And of course, I would like to once again give a massive thanks to the sponsor of this video, Tipsy Sake. Please consider checking them out if you are interested in exploring more about the fascinating world of sake. Links down below. Yet, with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.